Yeah. 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 in all facets of our society from schooling, family life, to the workplace. The Ministry of Cult Community Development, Culture and Gender Affairs. That is the, is the lead ministry in respect of addressing gender issues. And they would have worked on, I believe, what is now a draft gender policy that should be laid in Parliament sometime, sometime soon. Well, we would have we would have contributed to what has become the draft policy, right? Because at the end of the day, every ministry would be responsible for implementing, right, that 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 policy. Because of our, because we have we have come such a long way in ensuring equality of treatment in the in the world of work, um, that, that is a plus. But there is some work to be done to ensure, and, and I'm going to use some 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 words in the rules like respect um, when people interact in the workplace and respect for for, for gender. Um, so so the male and the female you know would have no difficulty working together. Um, and I believe as a ministry, you know, we, we can't take it for granted that all is well in terms of the relationship. La formation euh, dans le genre est euh, dispensée à des acteurs de développement que sont les femmes à travers les associations, à travers euh, les réseaux d'associations et ONG de promotion de la femme. Without a gender policy, um, you don't have any binding policy as to why public service institutions or technical ministries should engage. In gender mainstreaming. Il y a le facteur culturel qui peut être une barrière, mais cette barrière n'est pas insurmontable, bien entendu, parce que de plus en plus, les femmes donnent la preuve de euh, leur implication dans l'évolution, dans le développement. Socialisation is a big issue in the sense that we still train. Uh, men and women in stereotype manner. We carry this um, discriminatory, oppressive or, or attitude to our workplace. We don't have a policy that ensures quota system, that ensures that you must have a certain proportion of male, female in the world in decision-making position or in strategic position or ensuring that men and women have equal access to production resources. Nous combattons au ministère de la promotion de la femme et de la famille ce phénomène où c'est le garçon dans les familles qui doit être scolarisé et pas la fille. There's a lot of gender awareness in Cameroon today more than um, a decade ago. Um, the you, if you listen to the radio, you look at materials, you look at workshops, you look at conferences, everybody's speaking about issues of gender. Le ministère organise régulièrement euh, la, 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 la formation à travers des séminaires, à travers des ateliers, à travers euh, des, des, même cette sensibilisation qui est euh, faite en permanence. But when, when you look at public institution, none of them have a gender mainstreaming policy. They, they tokenize gender mainstreaming. If government has a national policy, it will 
declare in that policy the role of each institution, technical institution, in terms of how do we collectively gain capacity, get the resource to ensure gender mainstreaming. L'application la, la, de la bonne gouvernance exige que la politique du genre soit prise en compte. Il faut déjà que la volonté politique, et je pense qu'elle qu existe, et j'en suis persuadée, il faut qu'elle soit vulgarisée. It's important that you link up with an institution or organization that is um, does gender capacity building or training. If we put in place a policy that requires that project and policy are designed in a gender sensitive, gender aware manner, then everybody will run to build their capacity online. So online is good, but there must be um, utility attached to it. Uh, the follow-up of uh, the Beijing conference meant two years of uh, collaborative work between non-government organizations and individual experts and the government to develop a national plan of action for implementing the Beijing commitments. But on the other hand, we also see that there's a change that is requiring women to come out. There is poverty is increasing, women are getting more into the labor market, but because they are not seen as, uh, you know, this is not seen as their role, they are in the informal sector, they are therefore not paid enough, they are under um, double, triple burdens. So while their traditional role is not changing, more roles are added on to them. I really feel that uh, good governance means engaging with gender sensitive policies and programs, but equally engaging with implementers at, at the ground level. In Pakistan, that policies are gender sensitive uh, and programs, some of them, are definitely gender sensitive or address gender concerns. But we find that implementation is not. If it is perceived as something that has been, is, is coming because some donor is pushing it, there's a resistance. So there has to be a demand that is created at the level of delivery. And that demand comes from both sides. It, that demand can come from the mobilization of people in that uh, locality. On the other hand, there has to be a responsive uh, system which responds to it, which can be the political governance system as well as the administrative system. So in both instances, people who can make the change have to be sensitive. It's a great privilege to be able to be involved with this very important conference occurring in London. And I speak to you as 0.9% of the Parliament of Papua New Guinea. I come from the Pacific region, which is the lowest region for women's representation in the political arena throughout the world. It is also the, the region, the only region in the world that has shown no improvement in women's polit political participation between 1995 and 2008. So I think it's really clear that we are a, a nation and a region that have to look very seriously at how we work on the issues of gender mainstreaming. We look back traditionally at uh, a, a society that was based on networking, not on hierarchies, a society based on uh, a partnership between men and women and roles that are often now misinterpreted. On top of that we had introduced with colonialism a very patriarchal, a, a hierarchical system and I think that has really remained, become well entrenched because it did reinforce concepts of male, male dominance. And then on top of that we have to think of the situation today, although there have been some determined efforts to move forward on gender mainstreaming. We have the problems of uh, distance, geography, etc. We have the problems that the actual original 
gen, uh, public service training institutions are no longer doing generalised public service training. Uh, and so I think there we have to look at uh, rethinking the training aspects of public servants and rethinking them in a new way. Uh, and obviously to do that we're going to have to deal with the geography of the nation and find ways to overcome that with distance learning mechanisms. Good governance is fundamental to any developmental issue, be it gender mainstreaming, be it sustainable community uh, projects, governance is the actual foundation. If you don't have good governance in the first place, you can be pretty sure that whatever you're working on will fall apart. Uh, I'd say it's a foundation stone, and on that foundation stone of good governance, we then build creating learning societies. We are now in a learning information world, so creating learning societies. We have a lot to do in Papua New Guinea, an enormous amount to do, because we have large numbers of marginalised people who have been marginalised from the formal systems of education. That's why we must break free from the formal systems and work the whole spectrum of learning, from informal, non-formal, formal, call it what you like. Let's talk about learning societies and not get ourselves stuck in old models of formal systems. We, we cannot be bringing our public servants in and out of the, uh, their postings in the remote areas of Papua New Guinea. So we have to use new and innovative ways of reaching our public servants. This will, of course, mean a lot more financial and technical input into open and distance learning, uh, preparation of uh, DVDs, preparation of module materials that can be used uh, in remote areas of the country, in learning institutions of the country and in the various agencies and divisions of the government agencies right throughout the country from provincial level down to district level down to local level government. The, the task ahead is enormous so we, I think we as many developing Commonwealth nations will need uh, extra resources put into this area. In a country like Papua New Guinea, where we still do not what, have what you would call a very efficient uh, bureaucratic system, uh, we have a certain amount of dysfunction and I'm sure we're not alone in that in terms of developing common Commonwealth nations. It's really imperative that we learn new relationships in our uh, development process. And that with, with this learning of new relationships, learning and developing new relationships, we need to look at civil society agencies as well. I firmly believe that uh, government alone cannot grow a nation. It's about the interaction between government and civil society agencies. We have many agencies out, out in Papua New Guinea who are uh, working on issues to do with education, to gender, all sorts of things, and we have to make sure that they also are portraying the message of gender mainstreaming. So uh, it's, it's got to be what I call a WOG and WAS approach, whole of government, whole of society approach, if we're going to really move for the issue of gender equity, gender equality. Um, uh, and so it needs a concerted effort, it needs commitment from the highest political level, and it needs an understanding at the community level. So even, say, with our new policy frameworks of integrated community development, we need appropriate materials that can be understood at community level. About what gender mainstreaming in community activities is about. Um, we need uh, then another set of appropriate materials for civil society organisations, appropriate materials for Bureaucrat, for the bureaucrats at the varying levels uh, and so it is a huge task but it can be done we are in a global society enormous advances continuous advances of uh, in information technology and so we must capitalize on the information technology revolution we've passed the industrial revolution we are now into an information technology revolution we must capitalize on this and we must move forward with this all societies have gone through the era of the glass ceilings, the glass doors that women cannot break through. And so we've got to really be sensitive, not just to learn, but to understand and to adapt our behaviour patterns. Uh, and so it will take a lot of effort because some behaviour patterns are deeply entrenched. Um, so again, the whole process, I, keep, can't say it, I can't say it enough. Learning and opportunities to learn 
by learning, we take on hopefully an, a, a willingness to accept the learning, which brings to understanding, which brings to behavioural changes. And uh, for gender mainstreaming to truly occur at all levels of society, we need some thought mindset changes, paradigm shifts in the mindset and behavioural changes as well.